Okay, fine. I I'll do an introduction. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. <laughs> Twist my arm. <laughs> okay, Caitlin fucking Bristow yes. is on the podcast. I'm so excited. I just told you that I was a viney, do you call them? Or vinos? Oh, wow. A true vino <laughs> over here not knowing how to pronounce it. Wait, Way to humble wait, me. It's off the vine. So it's winos? No, it's vinos. Oh, so, so I said it. I get, you said vineys. Oh, okay. But that's okay. You can honestly call whatever you want to be. I, I'm here for it. Okay. So yeah. I listen. I told you like, I used to listen to Off the Vine, an armchair expert. I'm so flattered. Those were my two. Yeah. Until you know we started podcast and, and like then you, you don't can't imagine listening. Yeah. yeah. To more than. Is it because why? I don't why know. Can, it makes no sense because I don't really listen to my own either. I don't listen to my own, but here, I'll tell you why huh. I can't listen to other yeah. podcasts is because I then I play the comparison game oh. and I have imposter syndrome. Oh. And I go, am I not good enough to be podcasting? And I don't want to go down that. Spiral. Really? No, I don't have that. Mm. Oh, yeah. Just kidding. Me either. <laughs> <laughs> I get that with following people on Instagram that yeah. do similar things to what I do. Same. I can follow like models, celebrities, Same. influencers that yeah. are like different, but following like a pop culture account, then I'm like, what if your thoughts will become my thoughts yeah. by accident? And us? you know how like the internet like copies each other, but like the it's not really copying because everyone likes does the same thing yes because i just posted a tiktok where i was doing the yes you can hold my hand if you want to is that a new thing um maybe but i copied it off of girl and i what's like did a, this what's girl uh, i forget her name but she's a real inspiration to me <laughs> she's a viney <laughs> Wait, is her name re- girl? No, I'm gonna look it up. But when I was doing it, I was inspired by by her because wait, isn't that the thing about TikTok though? You use exactly. other people's things, okay? And then, uh, so I did it. Oh shoot, I can't. I'm editing a video, and I'm way too far in to do this. Oh my but, god, you can't exit it now. No, okay. Um, but a girl commented on my video, and she was like, "You're trying way too hard to be blah blah blah." The girl that I got the information from, and yeah. I was like, "Well." Isn't that what TikTok is? Aren't we all just stealing the each other's shit? Got the information from yeah. You're showing your age, Caitlin, with the oh, information. I did. <laughs> I, I mean, I it like remixing. What do they call it on TikTok? Look, I didn't even know what a get ready with me was. I thought it was oh, like a, a G. I thought it was a GRW. I thought it was a grown woman. I thought that's what that stood for. And I was like, yeah, grown woman with me. No, I can't. I, know. I have you done one? So I did one. For, oh my god! For the first time yesterday, as a joke or for realsies? Joke. Okay. And I d- literally said at the end, "Welcome to the like most like." There was no point to this TikTok. I did not even teach you anything. I said dumb stuff, and I didn't even get ready with you. I literally put on like <laughs> one coat of mascara and lip gloss in that whole video, and it was a complete fail. And I felt like I was thirty-seven years old trying to be twenty-two year old Alex Earl. Oh my god! Tell me. About this Alex Earl. I, okay, so I'm not on TikTok. Okay. Uh, what? What? And I'm the old p- person that's like, I'm not that. downloading another I app. I respect that. I know, but like, I keep on being a little tempted and something brings well, me out great of it. on it. I can't do it. I don't know how to, do, if you showed me the app, like, I don't even know. Do you, okay, so let's say it's two people. People. Yeah. Does it do it for you? Where like, it goes to the. No, it's a lot of work. It's a lot it of work. It is a lot of work, but I think your podcast clips would be. I know. They would my, do well literally, my agent is like, like I'll post the clips. I'm like, yeah. I no, but here's how I feel. First of all, I, 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 I started this Instagram and, I, pod, and my podcast with like such passion, dedication. I'm not gonna half-ass. I'm gonna open it because I'm like, I should be on there. I don't feel like I need. That's to. why you've done so well is because you can tell you're passionate about it. Yeah, and you've committed to it. But uh, you got to think of it as TikTok just being another platform for you to have. Um, how many platforms do you need? You know what? The possibilities are really endless because that's money in your pocket. That's how you feel. It's like a business thing, you think? Yeah. Well, TikTok for me is really fun. I feel like on Instagram, I do show my personality. And TikTok, I've usually just been copying other people's (laughs) stuff. But the get ready with me, I'm like, wait, I can do get ready with me, but make it my own get ready with me where I'm like not trying so hard. And I'm like, people don't really care about how I'm getting ready. They care to see my quirkiness. And that's what comes out. They don't care. Wait, so tell me about this Alex Earl phenomenon. I, no shade against her. I don't get it. I don't get, no, but that's why you're, by, by the way, you're here to explain it to me. So you better get okay. it. Okay. Well, 
I get, okay, I guess it's because I'm 37 and she's 22. If I was 22, I would get it because um, she's living a dream. She, you know, people are like, she's so relatable. Wait, but aren't we past worshiping people living dreams? Aren't we in a stage of... That's why I'm a little confused about her because she's, one, she's beautiful. Beautiful, rich. And she's sweet and very rich. Yeah. And so people are like, she's so relatable. And I'm like, relatable to me is like picking my nose in your car at a red light. Like, relatable to me is not showing up on a private jet yeah. to, like, your Christmas party. I um, wonder, is it she invented the GRWN grown woman um, <laughs> while you're talking? Is that true? No. Oh, did she? I don't know. While you're, like, telling a story. She's really Unrelated good at that. Unrelated to the thing. She's really good at that. But I don't know, because I just um, started... I don't even follow her, I don't think, but I just started... Getting fed knowing, her. Yes, getting fed. <laughs> she is being spoon-fed fed to me. down my throat. I know. That's what I don't like about, um, you know... The algorithms? The TikToks. Is like, I don't want you telling me. But it's funny. I told my sister yesterday. We were in the car. She was coming with me to, like, a stylist appointment. And we were just talking about this Alex Earl thing. By the way, I was a thousand years old being like, what's this Alex Earl? And like my sister was like, I'm like, Alex. I made her more unique in um, the pronunciation. <laughs> anyway, so my sister was like, she was at Haley's event. She was here. She was there. And I was telling my sister like, you know, it's really flattering when all these people want you. Yeah. But I was trying to explain to her how, how the industry works where like, the people that want her don't necessarily want her because they love her. They want her because she's hot right now. Totally. So everyone's right. And then get to the stylist appointment. I'm like, um, there was like an assistant there or something. And her name was uh, um, Alex, mm-hmm. but with an I. So I was yeah. like, oh, my God, we were just talking about Alix Earl. Alix. <laughs> and she was. <laughs> she didn't like it. She didn't think it was funny. Um, I was like, that's crazy. Alix and Alix. And so. They were like, oh, my God, all the stylists are fighting over her right now. Like, and Maeve, she, Maeve dressed her. Maeve Riley, who used to do Hailey Bieber. Okay. She won, like, the stylist battle. Okay. But basically, these girls were like, we're not that into her. We were just fighting over her. because. Th- so my sister was like, it's exactly what you said in the car. It's like, everyone wants a piece of you yeah. once you're a hot commodity. Yeah. So it's, like, flattering, but it's also, like... They're you like it's you're being kind of used. I'm worried for her to be honest with you about young people getting into it. Well, because I'm like, man, if that happened to me at 22 and you peak like that, yeah, it's and crazy. then you, but you don't, you don't have that uh, understanding of that people are just using you. You're like, oh, I'm actually it right now, right? And it's scary. I always I, think I'm, I'm, I'm like the, I'm on the other side. I'm like, but why? What, what do they want from me? You know? I'm Same. Like, I don't trust everything. anyone. I'm yeah. jaded. I'm, Wait, okay, yeah. but let's get to you because that's why we're here. Okay, tell me. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, okay, fine. Man. Ask me. Um, so really big fan. I told you I tried nice. to have you on my podcast for years. It's fine. Why did it Ignore take this long? Me. Was I saying no? I don't know, Caitlin. <laughs> that's so weird. No, you never, no, you never said no. Okay. Good. I, I, I think like, there I was once where it was going to happen, and then it was like you weren't doing zooms, and then it was kind of like oh, I did go through a no zoom phase, yeah, and then um, and then listen, it finally happened. Well, Who cares? T- the divine timing is what. Yeah, I, say. I mean, timing is a really important thing. Yeah. Um, I listen to your podcast, watch your season. <gasps> um, obviously, ship you and Jason. That's nice. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> really nice <laughs> um and okay so you're saying you wouldn't want to you wouldn't have wanted to be 22 what age did you start then 29 okay and that is a huge di- that's a huge difference i'm so glad because i at like 25 was like i need to be on tv or something and i was trying so hard to do things on like youtube and it just like really wasn't a- yeah is it findable <laughs> oh gosh, I hope not. I made sure one of my girlfriends is uh like I don't even know how to describe her. She used to work for Scooter Braun. Now mm. she's like she's just like a boss. Yeah. And she like helped me delete a lot of things off the internet when I went on TV. <laughs> Wait, so you want so only in two thousand fifteen only when you were twenty five you got the bug or when growing up were you like wanting to be No, I always had the bug. Yeah. But not like I don't know how to explain it. I just loved entertaining. Yeah. I loved making my family laugh growing up, but I was actually quite shy in public. And then in high school, I kind of 
grew into, I don't know, myself and was like, oh, I can like make other people laugh that aren't my family. Okay, let's try that. And then I loved entertaining. And then I was dancing and I found that as like a form of entertainment. And then, yeah, when I was 25, I'll never forget this guy, Dave Lingwood, who was on the show The Buried Life. I don't know if you remember that show. It was on MTV years ago. It was guys that wanted to cross things off their bucket list. And along the way, they would help other people cross things off their bucket list. And they picked me to be on their TV show. Uh, And I was like, this is my moment. <laughs> and then they cut the episode because... What were you supposed to do? So they were trying to cross something off my bucket list. And I auditioned for a music video. It was, I'm pretty sure, for like Soldier Boy. And I didn't get picked. So they had to like scratch my episode <laughs> and, and put uh, a blind cowboy riding a horse. And that was on his bucket no, list. And that stop. was much more, you know... Wait, were you auditioning for stuff or that just happened? No, that just happened. Oh, okay. Yeah. So what were you actually doing to like make that something happen? Nothing. I mean, not just manifesting. T's and P's, thoughts and prayers. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I was manifesting. Uh, no, I was just working at a restaurant in Vancouver and like meeting a bunch of famous people because everybody films there. But Oh, really? Like, oh, true. What are they that was there my, now? You should hear the people I've served in really? my days. Really? Hilarious. So what do you, did you try to like? No, flirt? I always acted like I didn't know who they were. Okay, so how is that going to like, like help you? Because they'd be like, wow, she's so cool. <laughs> oh, oh, Let's would, put her in my yeah, movie. It would be like the stories you always hear. Like they found Johnny Depp on the street in like Knoxville. Pamela or Anderson. Knoxville. Am I, making, I know his town. Pamela Anderson was discovered at um, Vancouver, British Columbia, BC Lions CFL football game on the big screen. I was a cheerleader for the BC Lions and thought, this is how she's going to get discovered. Yeah. But then I lost all that and I was like, actually, I'll just chase a hockey player because I'm Canadian. That's the dream. And Did you? Yeah, I did. Did you date one? Yeah. Moved everywhere for him. Stop. Lost myself. Got addicted to Valium. <laughs> that's pre tw- That's at 25? Yeah. Pre-25. 25, 26, 27 Valium. is when it was... 27 was like a really dark time for me. And then I was like, I don't care about anything except being happy. And then I rebuilt myself did so much therapy and then that's when I got a call to go on The Bachelor. Got a call. Explain. Uh, my girlfriend sent in like paperwork, pictures. Did you know? Videos. Yes. Yeah, she told me she was doing it because after the breakup I was like, I'll never find love again. And she was like, you would be great on The Bachelor. And I was like, I don't think they take you Canadians. You looked like such a goody too. She was on The Bachelor. I can't imagine. I did not. No, but like you were like Are you innocent. kidding me? I was like the controversial one. No, I know. But like you were like such a baby. I can't. I ima- was what I'm saying is I can't imagine you being on Valium. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was bad. It was bad. Um, I was just so I was in such a dark place when uh, it was the first breakup I've ever gone through. And if anyone's listening to this and they've listened to my podcast, they're like, you've beat that dead horse so badly that he's in another <laughs> like he's reincarnated and he's living a good life and you're still beating him. Um, but I've I was so broken when that relationship ended because I thought that's who I was going to marry. And I had no job, no money, I had no education, no plan, no hopes for my future. Uh, and I had to like kind of restart and uh, shout out to Jason Tardick's book, Restart, Reset. Uh, and then I was like, okay, I'm going to have to rebuild myself and like start over at a restaurant and like work my way back up, I guess. And that was at 27. Um, but in that time before I decided to like go to therapy, I lived um, with my parents and was on like antidepressants and Valium to like get by. It was crazy. So being on the Valium then is what got you addicted to it? Yeah. So I was like, oh, what? I can just take this pill and be numb. Oh, my God. I was so into it. And then um, my whole family was like. Help. Yeah. You have a really close family. Yeah. And they were like, Caitlin, you were a shell of yourself at the end of that relationship. You can't like now numb your shell of yourself and like expect to move forward in life. Like, let's help you get out of that. So then they did. Okay. Yeah. So then Bachelor happened. And then Bachelor And you're like, ooh, did you watch the show? Did you know? Oh, yeah. I was a huge fan. Uh, I actually, my girlfriend put in all the videos in to be on Juan Pablo's season. And they didn't call me for that. And then I just kind of forgot about it. And I was working at the restaurant one day. And I got a call from a number, California number. And I didn't answer it. And then I listened to the message and they're like, hey, it's Lacey casting from ABC's The Bachelor, wondering if you're like single and still thinking about coming on the show. And I was like, I was dating a guy at the time. I was like, 
Hey, Corey, <laughs> it's over. <laughs> I'm, I'm going oh, on TV. Wait. If it was now, there would be like articles about it. There was. Corey, oh, yeah? Yeah. Corey came out of the woodwork and was like, she left me. No, Corey didn't. But after, so I moved to Vancouver after I got the call and uh, met a guy and he was incredible. He was so great. But again, obviously not my guy because I was like, hey, don't let, don't fall in love with me. <laughs> Because I'm going on The Bachelor. Uh, and then I left. And yeah, so, but there was articles being like, she's the phoniest. And they had pictures of me and him. And he Stop. was like, no, she actually told me the whole time she was going. It's fine. Yeah. Oh, so he, did, so he was a cutie. He, oh, he's a gem. Gem, married with a baby now, super sweet, firefighter, real hero. Oh, yeah. it's like funny that you know all that info about this man. Well, I dated him. No, I know, but so long ago. <laughs> oh, well, we're still Instagram friends. Oh. Oh, yeah, he's lovely. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. Okay, so you go on Chris Soul season. Do you know it's Chris Soul's before? I was hoping it was. Um, it was between him and Ari. Linda Vike? <laughs> sure. I don't know how you say it. <laughs> it was him? Yeah. But he only got it years later then. I know. That's crazy. They've always wanted him to be The Bachelor. Wow. Yeah. I mean, his story is one that really ended up, like, working. Oh, my gosh. They're adorable. Like, really cute. Yeah. Three Family. kids. Like, yeah. they did the thing. They make sense. And they they're very And cute. they did it. Like, yeah. they, they, they got married. They had kids. Like, yeah. all the shit. Okay. Yeah. So, Chris Holtz, you were the third. Yes. So, like. Bronze medal on wait, the podium. So in your competitive nature, are you, like, happy about that? That you were, like. Yes. In the, in the top because three? That's where it was actually confusing to be on that show is because I am so competitive and I was very confused. I was like, do I actually love him or am I being competitive? Uh, I was being competitive. <laughs> <laughs> you can say that now or did you know then? I, I kind of knew like I was – I remember thinking that the whole way through. And when we got down to final three, I got really scared because I was like, what if it is me? And then I was like, do I love him? Am I being manipulated? Am I being brainwashed? Am I being competitive? And I really had to like journal about it. And one of the great things about being on The Bachelor is you don't have any other distractions. So you don't have a phone. You don't have books to read. You can't watch TV. You can't talk to your family. You can't talk to anyone that grounds you. So you're really like left with your thoughts. And I really pondered on that for a long time of if I was actually in love or if I was just like wanting to be the best. Yeah. And – I think it was both for Were me. you like, phew, when you were in pick, though? Um, not at the in the moment, but I'll never forget. So The Bachelor has a um, therapist, I guess, and she came into my room. She has to check on everybody who gets dumped. Oh, and nice. she came into my room, and I was hysterically bawling. I was sad because I was like, no, I think I really did love him. And she was like, Caitlin, every rose ceremony you got through, I was so scared for you because – you would have been bored to death with that man. Oh, I like this therapist. Same. So I was like, oh, you're not working with the show. You're a true therapist. Yeah. And, I, and it was in that moment where I was like, oh, wow, I've never had so – I've been surrounded by producers for so yeah. long. How nice to just have a real thought. Yeah. And a real – statement said to me where it's like no you wouldn't have been happy and i was like you're right that's crazy how long you've been in this bachelor world isn't it very so becca tilly was the second yeah do you like her are you friends with her love her so happy for her her you, and her girlfriend like i don't know them i amazing. haven't seen much of becca like I'm, but but i'm just so happy for this couple that i don't know so it's her and Haley, Before right? Before her and Haley came out and announced their relationship. Like everyone knew probably. If you Googled Becca Tilly lesbian, it came up with me <laughs> because we talked about how our love was like so real out of that show. Oh. And we said, could you imagine if we were like the first lesbian couple out of The Bachelor? And that would come up in articles. So now I got drowned out by Haley, but I love them. They're so cute They're together. They're really cute. I love it. Yeah. Um, okay. So what was the fame like? After that show, like, was it what we know today? Was it like Instagram followers? Was it? Yeah, it was actually the start of Instagram. So when I went on The Bachelor, I think that was the first season from then till now where you actually weren't trying to go on for Instagram. Like, it, we didn't know that was going to be a thing. So I was truly going on for an experience. I was like, well, people, you know, could build a brand or do something. Yeah, you were very open as a Viney. <laughs> 
as a true viney. As a true viney. <laughs> I remember that that's something you always like we're honest about you were yeah. like i knew you could like build a brand yeah. do a thing and like also find something like yeah, bonus okay yeah so the fame was crazy because i you know everyone says you sign up for it or you know what's gonna happen and you're like no i actually had no idea that was gonna come from it so i didn't know people were gonna offer me money to post on instagram i didn't know I love how you were building a brand and you were a waitress before like what <gasps> brand were you building <laughs> Just the brand of Caitlin Bristow. <laughs> I love that. Like you had so much. Like I just thought I I I thought I wanted to share therapy stuff. Like I was like I want to have a voice and talk about how important therapy is and like being your biggest cheerleader and like growing just based on being authentic. Like that was already in my brain oh. before knowing that could actually be. Well, a you kind of did that though. Yeah. With the pod. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Thanks. Okay. But yeah, it was crazy. So the fame Instagram followers did come. Was there I, like I, paparazzi was the wildest thing to me because I never thought paparazzi would ever follow me and it was very short lived, which was fun. Um, because I can't imagine having that. Really? Forever. It wasn't fun? It was fun for about like a week. And yeah. then I was like, okay, hey, this is terrible. Was this in LA? Uh yeah, and Vancouver actually. Were you trying to live in LA then? No. I never tried. Oh, you never tried? No. No. Really? I wanted to get in and get out, and I didn't want to get chewed up and spat out, and I kind of did, but... So, uh, see, that's something I feel like with age. You know what I mean? That you had that inner voice telling you, like... Because I feel like everyone, usually in The Bachelor, they're, like, from Alabama, and they moved to L.A. Yeah. By themselves, like, the day, you know, they get kicked out of the show. So many Bachelor people do, too, and I get it, because it's like, there are opportunities, but I was so focus on staying grounded and like humble and I got scared to get lost in that and I didn't want it to be like a taste of a drug where you got a little taste of fame and then Mm. you just go down like the rabbit hole yeah and I wanted to actually like build a life for myself which again you're right it came with age because if that was me at 25 I would (laughs) have I wouldn't be here you'd be like partying (laughs) in LA and I did that too but I was able to like separate yeah okay I'm gonna go do that but then I want to come back here and I want to like build a life for myself so were there trolls then and mean oh. people or not as much as today? I'm yes. trying to make it like it's worse today and you're not helping me. Oh. Is um, it not worse today? It was bad then? Yeah, in it was 2015? Really bad. It was really bad. Really? Yeah. But you're it talking. It probably is worse today. People thought you were controversial after your season. I didn't yeah. remember that people thought you were controversial after. This, Chris's season? Yeah. Yeah, they did make me kind of an angel. <laughs> 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 no, they've, uh, they made me. Not that they made me, but yeah. they definitely showed my more relatable side and like having my walls up and then being like, okay, I'm going to trust my gut and fall in love and like letting it all down and then getting hurt. Yeah. Uh, and then the bachelorette, it was like, oh God, she has sex. What? Uh, okay. So the controversy with you, if you guys haven't watched with your bachelorette, because then you got yeah. to be bachelorette, yeah. which is huge. How did that, were you like, oh, what was that like getting the call or? Well, it was crazy because, uh, They've only ever had another Canadian be the bachelorette once. And she was – Jillian Harris, shout out. She was one of my favorite bachelorettes. Um, but I was like, ah, they're not going to pick, like, an edgy, swearing Canadian who, like, talks about sex all the time. Like, they want girl next door. Yeah. Emily Maynard vibes. And so when they pick, or when they called me to, like, talk about it, I was like, what? Because you know Reality Steve? Yeah. He, like, had said – this girl would never be the bachelorette. She's so He's out wrong there. All the fucking time. He's wrong about my season too. He's wrong all the time. And so I was like, oh, okay, it's probably not me. So when they called, I was like, what? And then they're like, but there's a catch. You're going to be competing against Brit. Yeah. Two bachelorettes. The guys will pick who it will be. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I'm out. I'm not doing that. Yeah. And they were like, well, how about this paycheck? And I was like, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so then it was competitive what if you would you have gotten that paycheck if you weren't no. picked but i did negotiate to have i still would have got money got if something. Brit was picked yeah did you have like an agent like already you were like set up had people i had an entertainment lawyer that helped me okay and then as we all know you got picked yeah and your season was crazy so the controversy <laughs> i wonder okay this is another question okay the craziness from your season was really the the sex with Nick yeah. Vial, yeah. who we know today. Yeah. By the way, he just got engaged. And congrats. Yeah. Did you text him? Congratulations. I didn't because he does a whole thing about like not texting your ex. And I was like, is this me crossing a line? <laughs> or like his whole shtick is like, right. don't that's text his, your ex. That's the name of his book. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, 
I wanted to, but then I was like, or is that weird? Yeah. Um, but I am genuinely happy for them because they seem legitimately meant for each other yeah. and sweet and like I believe in their love. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Did you know that she's 23? I did. Uh because people were shocked that she's 23 and people are also shocked to know that Nick is like 42. Yeah. Which like he should come out with some skincare. Yeah, or drop something. your skincare now. Yeah. Uh yeah, it's crazy because so what happened? He did a podcast not too long ago where he was kind of dragging me for stringing him along on The Bachelorette. And I was like, wait, that was five years ago. Wait, this is after you did podcasts together, though. Oh, yeah. This was, like, actually quite recent, like a couple, a few months ago. And he was, like, kind of calling me selfish and saying I strung him along. Said your name or was, like, talking? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Same and I was like, oh, that's too bad. That That's weird. I didn't expect him to kind of go off on me like that. I thought we were friends. But Did okay. people send it to you? How do you know? Oh, about yeah. Like, oh, it's people send it to you. Yes. And then I can't – what's the name of the account? Like Game of Roses podcast yeah. uh, tagged me in something. And they're like, Caitlin, he – like he went off on this for like a solid 20 minutes. And I was like, oh, my gosh, that, that's kind of mean. And so then somebody else posted and they're like, Nick – you did the same thing on your season. You knew it was Vanessa from wait. He day was one. Whoa, wait. He was dragging you as a bachelor. I mean, he better than anyone knows it's a TV show and like the shit right. that you have to do. That's why it was very confusing. And they were like, he's still butt her. And they were like, by the way, your girlfriend was fifteen while she was watching <laughs> your, this happen. And I was like, wait, what? And then I looked up the age and I, and I was like, oh shit. Okay. Oh my god. Yeah. Men's egos, let me tell you, are so big. So big. That they can't live life. Like, he literally, probably even though he was cool with you, you guys, like, kind of made up. Yeah. It's still there for him. It's still there. That and you that's, rejected I mean, him. Sean Booth. Also ego. Also ego. I'll never forget. I said, Sean, if you just put your ego aside, we could probably work. And he yeah. was like, what ego? You've crushed my ego. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Sean, I remember you going through that with Sean and also thinking just the ego was so big. Uh, yeah. He couldn't get over the Nick thing, I remember. No, never. I still don't think he is. He was on Jason's flight today to New York. No. <laughs> yeah. Hilarious. Yeah. Did they say hello? No. Did they see each other? Yeah. What are the odds? That's what I said. I went four years without running into him I was anywhere. Ask and you, he lives in Asheville. I've seen him three times in the last three months. Do you say hi? No, I would love to, though. But no, it's it hasn't been like we're like right there and could say yeah. hi. It was more like he was in a distance. And you think he hates you? Um, no, I think he did for a long time. Yeah. Uh, and I think now he probably is. I hope over it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I would. I I would love to just be able to say like if. Did I you ever him, say like, who ended it? Uh, yeah. I just it's still confusing because I'm like we both kind of did. Um, he basically, he basically said like, I don't know why I can't get over it. And I don't know why I can't love you the way that you need me to. And I was like, so what am I supposed to do? Like, do I stay Wait, with you? Wait, you guys were together for years though. Years. How many years? Six? Three and a half. Okay. I really took wow. it. Wow. <laughs> I mean, that's a lot though. Yeah, it was a lot. To be engaged he from the Bachelor get over franchise. Nick? No. No, I think that is. Did he watch the season? Yeah. Do you understand now couples that are together after seeing their season that like wilder shit goes on? You're like, wow, you got over that? And you're like with yeah. your partner where he couldn't get over this? Yeah, because I'm like, I I want to have a little bit of compassion and empathy for it because I don't know if I could get over that either. You know, like him having sex with another woman on national television and me just being like, ah, it was me the whole time. And then watching it back and being like, oh, <laughs> shit, it was not me the whole time. Like, I get that that is yeah. totally like. And then you like, find out like after you're engaged. Yeah. Yeah. I But I mean, I made sure to tell him everything that happened before he proposed to me because I didn't want him to watch back. Yeah. And see everything. Ugh, so. There needs to be like a no watch back rule. Do you think though there that you be. being way more – I would say, like, famous and, and loved than him played a part in it. I think that would – Jason and I talked about this the other day because to have a healthy relationship needs to start on a really solid foundation. And to start on a foundation where you're dating a bunch of other dudes and it's manipulated television and edited and, you know, like, copy and pasted what you were saying and you're saying about someone else and it's just a mind fuck. Yeah. So – 
to come out of that and actually have confidence in your love would be really challenging. Um, and I think no matter who you are, like I, again, I want to have compassion for Sean's feelings in that because as much as that pissed me off and I wanted to be like, get the fuck over it. Yeah. Um, I also was like, God, I would be really insecure too. Yeah. And, you know, we've all, don't get me started on inner child work. I'm about to go do a huge therapy retreat about inner child work. And he went through some really tough stuff as a kid and mm. didn't trust people. Yeah. And so I try and look at it from that perspective. Yeah. Um, he he did some really hurtful things to me and I did some hurtful things to him. And I don't know. It's just, it's a really tough show to come out of and have a healthy relationship. Did you get jelly watching Jason and Becca? No. <laughs> Not even a little bit. <laughs> Wait, so why? How do you? Well, I'm looking back, but weren't they like in the like what they were like in Europe? It was very like conservative. I feel like. Well, Jason's a little bit conservative, right? And, and like you know, and then polished. he was more. He was like more slick, even. Oh, he was Mr. Buttoned Up, <laughs> slick banker. Like Jason, nice shoes, like yeah. those, like yeah, worky shoes. Yeah, he was so sweet. He still is sweet. Did but you like, watch he was so it then? Yeah. Did you? Like, put your eye on him? Were you like, hmm, I wanted him to be The Bachelor. Oh, like, you were, like, rooting for him. Yeah, yeah. I was totally rooting for yeah. him. Like, I wanted him to find love. And I was like, oh, he's so cute if he, like, took out the gel. And, <laughs> like, because I was like, the slick back look is really a thing. Um, but I was like, he's so smart and yeah. kind and well-spoken and, like, good-looking and all these things. And I really wanted him to be The Bachelor. And so even, no, Becca Kufrin, who he was in love with, is one of our great friends. <laughs> you would say that, though, who he was in love with? Yeah. That's, um, how you, that's an intense thing to say. I asked him. I was like, were you actually in, because I think about myself in that situation with Chris Souls, and I'm like, I don't know if I was actually in love with him. Yeah. Um, so in you the asked time, him? maybe. So I asked him. And he said, yeah? And he said, yeah. You guys are so, like, healthy communicators. Well, in some aspects, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And he said, yeah. Did it sting? No. Wait, she's with um Thomas? Yeah. Engaged. Like, if Jason would ever post anything about his time, I'd be like, don't do that. Yeah. But it's not, like, I love her and I get why he was in love with her. Um, She's one of my favorite people out of the whole franchise. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. So I get it. I get it. I just get it. And I know he's not in love with her anymore. Right. But it's funny because I was so insecure with Sean where if he was in love with somebody else, I couldn't even hear her name. Huh. Yeah. But Jason just makes you feel really secure. Yeah. I know. It's nice. I love that. Yeah. Um, just for a second about the backlash you got about the sex stuff. Yeah. How weird. Bizarre. Like, okay, I'm asking the same question, but do you think that today, today, like – Fucking January 2023. No. No, right? No. You're right about that. Yeah. Finally. Yeah. <laughs> Finally. I I'll got it today. It. I'll give you I that. I got it today. I'll give you that. Because people were like, how, you know, oh, what was I, the thing? Uh, we're like, everybody now has sex on the show. I remember Hannah Brown having sex in a windmill four times and people were like raising Praising the roof it. for right. her. And I right. was like, I and I love that because part of the reason like, I was. like, paved the way. Yeah. They were like, Caitlin walked so Hannah could run. Yeah. And I was like, I love that. Yeah. Because part of the reason I did want to talk about it is I was like, why are we, why are we shaming people for this? Or like, we, we make fun of virgins and then we shame people who you know have what's sex. Funny though, Caitlin, that the person you did it with was Nick. Uh, I mean, it's <laughs> like, like, it, like it's like a good story. Do you get yeah. what I mean? Where oh, I'm yeah. going with this, it's like it's such a good story to tell your grandkids. You know, <laughs> yeah. I can't wait to tell my grandkids <laughs> and show them and on like YouTube. remember forever. But it's not, but it. But it could have been, I feel like, a different dude to be to for the story to be better. Well, the whole thing was, I mean, even the producers really sexualized Nick to me. Like what? they were, they were like, like, he's so. There was one producer. I've never even said this. You get the exclusive. <laughs> one producer actually said to me, after I would kiss him, she'd come and like, like wipe Swab my your vagina, li dude, my lips. Your wet. And she would swipe my lips and like lick her lips and be like, oh, I just want to know what that tastes like to like make out with Nick. They made, they really like put him on a pedestal to me. And he was less hot then. That was pre glow up. Pre glow up. And they that was pre glow up. And Sean was so good looking. Sean I was always was like, so Sean could get it. Totally. Yeah, and like, I was like, oh, well, it's Sean. And then, but they really, but you know, that was part of their tactic and, and, way she too like that is raunchy i know i know so you were thinking oh so you were like 
basically brainwashed. brainwashed that he's a sexual beast that you need to like and he find would, out and he like he was very sexual with me he really like made me feel desired and he'd like like he was really sexual yeah and is it weird thinking back about this stuff yeah <laughs> because i'm like god now i'm like i think of him as like Oh, it's Nick. Like, yeah, I don't even remember that's who that was. Like, yeah. it feels like a, a it's character weird. on that's the show to me. That's what I'm saying. Like, there's Nick and there's the, like, weird thing now that it's like, are you cool? Or are you not? Yeah. But it's also the guy, you know, yeah, know. that it's you so weird. did the thing with that, like, Sean was so upset over and, yeah. like, this whole thing. Yeah. Anyway, congrats to Nick. Are you going to, like, be like, <laughs> are we okay? Well, we'll see if I'm invited to the wedding. I'm just kidding. Are all Bachelor people invited, do you think? Uh, he'll have a lot of. I feel like he'll invite you. You think no? If he did, it would be for headlines. <laughs> be for See how podcast paranoid content. You is? Like, would I, you go? I don't, I don't trust anyone. Um, would I go? If, yeah, I probably would. If you were invited, well, Jason and Nick are friends too. Oh, they're friendly. Yeah. Oh, this bachelor nation. It's people. bizarre. Think about it though. I. <laughs> I was in love with Chris Souls, and then I had sex with Nick, but then I was also in love with Ben Higgins, but then I picked Sean, and now I'm with Jason. Like, and it's ben, so no, weird. And, like, all these people really evolved since. Like, Ben Higgins is, like, different. Yeah. Living a kind of different life, right? Totally. Wow, Caitlin, you That's, really went through them. I, <laughs> hey, but you got some good ones. You got some, like, Ben Higgins is a really good one. Yeah, he was in great company. Good guys. <laughs> 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 ben Higgins was a good one. Um, okay. Jason. Yeah. So saw him rooting for him. And then you guys clicked when he came on your podcast. Yeah. Was he a Viney? <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, I'm switching their names to Viney forever. Uh, no, he was just kind of like doing his media rounds. Yeah. Cause in he, Nashville. Um, no, we were in, I was in Seattle visiting a girlfriend. Oh, I literally took an Uber to go to the studio to podcast with Jason and I almost canceled because I was bawling my eyes out in the Uber because Sean was being mean to me because we had already broken up and I don't know, he was being mean. And right before I got out of the Uber, the Uber driver looked at me and he said, don't ever let anyone talk to you like that. Oh, and then heard? I sobbed even harder. He heard the, like, yeah. it was on like speaker. Yeah. <laughs> and then I sobbed and I walked in and then Jason walked in and I, I was FaceTiming my dad trying to calm down and then... Jason was saw me and I was like, I'm a mess. I'm just going through it. And he was like, great. I'm a mess too. I just came from like a charity event where I cried. And then we just kind of like clicked. But uh, I, I wasn't attracted to him on the podcast. I remember uh, who was there, Olivia? Yeah. Sarah. You know why Olivia was there? Why? Because I was scared of Sean and I wanted a buffer because he was being weird about me podcasting with a bachelor dude being single. So I was like, fine, I'll bring a buffer. Wait, even though you were broken up, he was trying yeah. to control the situation? Yeah. Wow. I mean, a little I, toxy. We both were. Mm. I don't want to put it all on him. Yeah. I was very toxy too to yeah. him. Yeah. So Olivia was there. Yeah. And But okay, so you're saying you weren't attracted then, but people, the, the story is told that like there was like some talking chemistry there. Total chemistry. Yeah. Oh my gosh. We had great chemistry. Yeah. The, like... I always think about... Oh, my God, um, his worst fear happened. Sean's worst fear happened. I know. I know. Oh, my God. And Even with the buffer. I know. Yeah. Oh, my God. He probably manifested it somehow. Yeah, without sometimes even you, like... Yeah, it's, like, wrong... <laughs> wrong. <laughs> Concentrate on something yeah, yeah, else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So, talking chemistry, but you weren't, like, I want to... Well, because I think about, like, um, my chemistry with Artem from Dancing with the Stars. Just because it's chemistry doesn't mean it's sexual. Right. Uh, and that's what I felt with Jason. I was like, we have insane chemistry. But I wasn't thinking, like, I want to jump his bones. Yeah. Uh, it was more like, wow, just really easy to talk to yeah. you. And what an incredible guy. And then we just kept talking from the podcast on and like just texting into something. and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then how did it go from like friends to more? Um, oh, duh. Because he, a girl that worked for some hockey team, I can't remember what hockey team, I want to say Boston maybe, had reached out to him like to go on dates, like, hey, we should go out or whatever. And then Jason sent her Instagram profile to me and he's like, this girl's asking me on dates. Should I go? And I was like, Aww. and I was like, nair. And then I went, oh. Okay. Oh, that you were like jelly? Yeah. I was like, I don't want you to go. And then I was like, okay. Was but, he that whole time though wanting and you weren't? Yeah. Like you could feel that like he would want to. I think he was more. trying to respect the zone of like, you I was totally putting up, him yeah. in a friend zone. We just broke up and he was like kind of getting sick of just being in the friend zone. So he was like, 
would this bug her? And then he sent it to me and I was like, that bugs me. And then we're like, okay. <laughs> so how long were you friends before you like started dating? Probably like four months. Oh, that's a long time. Yeah. That's I, a long well, let's time. think about it. It was September, October. It was October, November, December. Yeah, it was four months. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah. Did you do you feel like you didn't get enough time to be single now that you're like gonna get married too? Yeah. I would, yeah, I guess. But it's, it's just weird like, how things happen. You can't well, plan when you them. go on when you're the bachelorette and you date that many guys, you're kind of over dating. <laughs> like right. I'm like right. I, I'm like, I don't really need to be single. I've dated so many guys yeah. that I'm like, eh, I don't really care to be single. You know what I'm wondering about you? Because I can't remember. Because I can't imagine you doing this. Did you say all the chuggy bachelor things when you were bachelorette? Were you like... Probably. I like, I tried I'm, not to. Like, I remember trying not to. What are the words? Like, like journey. Amazing journey. Like uh, um, here I'm for the right reasons. To fall, is, right. I'm starting to fall in love with you. Yeah. There are different categories. I remember trying so hard not to. And but I don't... Why you hear it all the time. Like I... I when I went on... I was almost trying to be too cool on that show. Like, I was like, I'm not going to say the dumb stuff that they yeah. always say. I'm not going to be involved in the drama. I'm yeah. not going to fall in love right away. Yeah. I'm not going to cry. That lasted like a week. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but you did come out cool. You know what I mean? Well, I tried really hard to think. So. <laughs> it worked. Okay. So you got some cool opportunities. Another thing you talked about a lot, uh, you know, listening to your podcast, I remember, is like, you wanted to go on Dancing with the Stars. Mm -hmm. It was a thing that happened for a lot of people that came out of the show because of ABC, ABC. Someone put like a fucking foot in your way. If yeah. That's a saying. Um, uh, and somebody put a somebody. You know, someone was stopping you. Yeah. Someone wasn't letting Pop that rock. happen. Yeah. Why? Um, and it was Robert Fleiss. Uh, Mike Fleiss. Mike Fleiss. So. First of all, it's so funny. My relationship with Mike Fleiss is so interesting because, um, again, with my age, I'm getting softer. And for people I used to hate, I know, you used now to be I have compassion. You used to be angry about it. I remember you used to be, like, angry about it. I was so angry. Mm -hmm. And now... You're like, I'm a dancer. Yeah, I'm a dancer. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me dance. Uh, yeah, I was so angry because... I felt that show was very sexist in the first place. They don't pay the bachelorettes the same as they pay the bachelors. They give the bachelors more opportunity. They slut shamed the hell out of me. But if a guy does it, and it's part the, the people who create the show, but it's part the audience as well. Uh, so I was so annoyed because uh, Sean Lowe had done Dancing with the Stars. Chris Souls did Dancing with the Stars. And the only bachelorette that had ever done it was Trista Sutter. But she was the first bachelorette and they were really trying to promote so the show. was a long time ago. Yeah. And so when I came off the show and I got an offer to go on Dancing with the Stars, I was, I don't know TV. I don't know contracts. I'm like a little Canadian who's never been involved in this stuff. So I was like, I'll do it. I didn't know that I had to like, you know, check with the creator of the show. I was still under contract. So I was like, yeah, great. And then all of a sudden I got a message or an email from someone. I can't even remember who it was. And they were like, yep, uh, you're not allowed to do the show, the Dancing with the Stars. And I was like, I'm supposed to fly to New York like in two days to be announced on Good Morning America. What do you mean I'm not doing the show? And they were like, yeah, uh, Fly says no, like you're still under contract, so you can't do it. And instead of being like, okay, I was like, why? And then I was like, put me in touch with him. Somebody Wait, did. OK, looking back at the contract, did it say anywhere that you like can't do the show specifically? It didn't say I can't do the show specifically, but it did say that they have, to have the right of refusal yeah, yeah. for me to do other gotcha. things. And I was not taking no for an answer. I called assistants. I called the production studio. I was like, put me in touch. He's on the phone. Oh, he can't talk. I was like, I'll wait. I'll wait. Put him on the phone. Like you physically called. Oh, yeah. And I finally got in touch with Fleiss and I said, why can I not do Dancing with the Stars? And he goes, Caitlin, I'm just sick of people wanting fame after my show. And I said, but you've let other bachelors do it. Ew, dancing that's is a, a gross fucking reason. Well, wait for it. I said, dancing has been a passion of mine my whole life. And he said, well, Sean should be your passion now. And I was like, I'm going to throw up. Uh, but he never liked me in the first place. He didn't want me to be the bachelorette. Um, a couple of the producers had to convince him. And then now fast forward to, I was just, you know, at the finale for the last season, Gabby and Rachel's and saw a Fleiss and yeah. he wanted, you could tell he wanted to avoid me, but I just walked right up to him and I was like, 
hey. And he's like, Caitlin, he's like really proud of everything you've done. You, like, Was it a closure moment? Yeah. And I was like, cool, cool. Because I was like, you know what? I could have shut my mouth and I could have not tweeted and called him a sexist piece of shit. But I did. Yeah. And I was like, I'm standing by how I feel. Yeah. Women need the same opportunity as the men. And I – got somewhere from it and I'm yeah. proud of myself for it and you ended up fucking doing it and winning it and then I won <laughs> <laughs> well like that's really amazing cool. that's something you wanted to do and you ended up doing it yeah that probably felt so good it was one of the coolest moments of my whole life because I used to grow up watching that show with my mom I love dancing my mom was a professional ballerina and I just always like dreamt of doing something with dancing I can't believe he said we're sick of people wanting want, fame. like 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 it or not that's happening now like, and that does good things for your show because those people then gain fame then they have the numbers to bring in more viewers and keep loyal you know that's like really gross i'm like kind of ugh. yeah that's gross it was um and then you hosted so here's the thing though <laughs> yeah. you've talked some shit yeah. about bachelor people yeah about mike sometimes i don't even remember if you used to say things about chris but you were upset with the with the with the franchise sometimes yeah. But they give you opportunities, which is pretty cool. They didn't for a while. Yeah. And then they did because I think they saw like, well, she speaks her mind whether we like it or not. And people, you know, it's always about ratings. Yeah. So if she's kept an audience for this long, let's give her a shot at doing the hosting because, yeah. you know, these people are so loyal. Uh, so I think they you know, they were like, oh, let's see what happens. And yeah. Bennett, one of the executive producers, he was one of my main producers as a bachelorette. And I've always got along really well with him. And he always kind of believed in me and he gave me the shot for hosting. Did you like it? I loved it. I felt like that's where I was supposed to be in life. I yeah. thought I was going to do it for a long time. I really did. What? How many seasons? What, was it two? Two. And then what? They just decided not to bring you back? I was on the tour bus for Dancing with the Stars, and I remember I had to take a meeting, and I was in the back of the bus, and the Rob Mills and uh, Bennett called me, and I thought they were going to be like, all right, so you're our new host. And they were like, well, you probably, you know, saw this coming, but we can't have you anymore. And I was like, what? <laughs> I didn't see that coming. <laughs> <laughs> I got all the confidence in the world. Yeah. Um, and so they were like, yeah, we just, we need a more consistent host. And so we're going with Jesse Palmer. And Which I was, like, was out of left field, no? I was like, well, you're making a mistake. Not because I don't like Jesse. Yeah. I think he's actually an incredible host. And You thought you wanted the, the thing with Tasha where both of you were supporting mm -hmm. to be... Wait, no. You and Tasha did it by yourselves mm -hmm. for so, Michelle's season. Michelle and Katie. Michelle and Katie, you yeah. did by yourselves. Mm -hmm. And then the next one was? Then, that we, then we were done. Oh, that was the only yeah. thing? Yeah. Oh. And then they brought – so did you think you would get it, like, alone maybe? I did. Mm. I did because at the end, I Tasha had COVID and couldn't make it for the finale, for the After the Final Rose live taping. Mm. And everyone was shitting their pants, like – Caitlin's up there alone. She can go rogue. Like, who knows where yeah. this chick's a liability. Oh, right. Yeah. And I was like, I am going to do my best I can. Yeah. And I felt so good about it. And at the end, they were like, wow, you did really well. And then. How, so thought, how do you explain yeah. that? Like, why? How did they decide on Jesse Palmer? Um, I Again, I think they just wanted a more consistent role where it was like someone that's going to host The Bachelor, The Bachelorette and Paradise. And you can do that? I don't think they wanted me to. Oh, so what do you mean they wanted a more consistent? I don't know. Someone mm. that's like... You're like, I'm just saying. I am, like, I'm just saying what I was told. So Chris Harrison, <laughs> we talked about this before. He has a podcast. Mm -hmm. I haven't listened, but I've gotten cliff notes from different people. He was talking about people that reached out to him. He's naming names. Well, your name didn't come up. I told it you. It didn't. I reached out to him. Oh, it didn't. I'm surprised he actually didn't say anything. So he didn't bring up my name. I don't think so. Oh. He didn't. That shocks um, me. I told you he he mentioned Nick's name. Mm -hmm. He mentioned that he thought Wells should get it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the job. Yeah. I um, see that. Which I guess makes it. He was also in the family. Yeah, like, Wells is amazing. Um, so it's interesting that it's, it's hard because like sometimes when you work places and this was like work, it's like something doesn't really make sense and you just have to like accept. I know. Because you're like, there's always a reason in the higher ups that I won't ever know about. Yeah. But I was, I'm, I am shocked that Chris never said anything because, so when they offered 
first of all, when all of that went down with him and Rachel, Rachel is a dear friend of mine, and I didn't agree with how Chris was talking to her yeah. in that interview. And but Chris was also a dear friend of mine. So I remember, I, I remember you podcasting with him, and like you guys were close. Oh, he to me one of my like. I always said if when Jason proposes, he has to ask my dad, my stepdad, and Chris Harrison. Stop. Yeah. So what happened? So I was like, okay, when this all went down, I reached out to Rachel and I reached out to Chris and I said, you know what you did was wrong. You know that. Like, I understand there's so much more to it, but um, what do you want me to do to support you while also standing up for what I believe in? And then he called and we talked and he just said like – yeah, I don't want anyone to really get involved or whatever. Like, it's it's hard. So I understand that you have to, you know, say what you need to say. And I was like, well, I, I don't agree with what you said. Um, but you know that. Blah, blah, moving on. Then they offered me the position to come in. And what they said, the Bachelor franchise said it was to mentor Katie. Yeah. I wouldn't be replacing Chris. Right. So then all these articles started coming out saying, Caitlin Bristow and Tasha Adams replacing Chris Harrison. And so I messaged Chris probably 10 times without him responding and that is so not like him to me and i know he had, it's not about me it's like, not about what did you want his, his own um no i just wanted him to know that i thought he was irreplaceable and that i wouldn't didn't want to step on toes oh and so i was like you're irreplaceable i i don't know what my role is they said it was a mentor but now i'm seeing articles about how i'm replacing you and i just that makes me feel icky and then he didn't write back and then I was like, okay, well, now I'm panicking. Why didn't you write me back? And then he didn't write me back. And then I was like, I'm on my period. Am I being emotional? But like, <laughs> do you hate me? And then he didn't write back. And then I was like, can you call me? And then he didn't write back. And then I was like, okay, he hates me. And we were like best friends and now he hates me. And then uh, I saw him at Wells and Sarah's wedding. And I walked up to him and I was like, oh, I miss you. And he's like, well, I've always been here. And I'm like, no, you haven't. <laughs> you haven't responded to me in like forever. Yeah. So yeah, that was tough. So you didn't get answers? No. How could he not like you for taking a job? So I don't think it was actually about me if I can remove, again, my ego. I'm like, you're getting and... me fucking hot today, <laughs> Caitlin. Now I understand. I shot a tequila before No, <laughs> but no, but it's just like, how could he, like, how could he? Have you ever read The Four Agreements? No. Okay. Well, one of the four agreements to try and live by in life is to not take anything personally. And right, I had like to, it's his. It's not. It's, it's a, it wasn't about me. Yeah, I I think he was going through so much in his life, and he was like, you know, lo he lost twenty pounds. He was depressed. He was no, obviously, but there was a reason why. But I mean, yeah, I think he was definitely. It's not about you, obviously, but, but there was a reason why you he didn't consider you a a safe person, a close. Yeah, person I was anymore. really. I was really. I bawled my eyes out about it because I was like like you lost that friend. friendship just felt like it went down the toilet and do you it was think never he was mad about you not supporting him publicly no because it was more about taking how, his role. how do you what did he want people publicly? to say no to opportunities right I would oh my god I mean it's not like he didn't you know I wasn't Nick where I was smelling blood in the water yeah and so that's like, what he was minute. saying I was telling Caitlin they before we me. started one of the things he said on the podcast was that there were a lot of people that didn't wait a second like yeah. agents were reaching out oh I never and, reached out to anyone and, and and trying to get to get I mean because it was a co it's a coveted position oh to get dream. like and people always thought like he'll do it till he dies yeah and then like it's tough, too, because I think he told me on my podcast that he would retire around the age of 42, 43, and this was around that time. And, you know, that's his legacy now. So I think he was probably really crushed that, like, he wanted to go out on top when he was, yeah. you know, and then that's how people are going to remember him. It's yeah. really tough. Yeah. Um. So I think it was just all him going through yeah. his own stuff, and I don't think it was my fault. Yeah. But I think he... Did you like congratulate him for his engagement with Lauren and stuff? Oh yeah, yeah. I congratulated him on the podcast, everything. Yeah. Did he answer? Yeah. He oh, did. so since seeing him at the wedding, he's like answered you, yeah. but it's not the same. It's right. like distant. Right. Okay. So is Bachelor Nation, which you're a part of, oh. like a love hate thing for you? Are you like ugh, but like it's part of your journey kind of thing? It's more love for mm -hmm. sure. Uh, I never want to be like. I don't want to be afraid of the hand that fed me. I don't care to bite it because I will stand up for what I believe in. And if like right is right to me and wrong is wrong. And I understand it's a TV show and I can't always align with that. Um, I don't believe in a, 
I got really excited because I saw potential for the growth and evolution of that show with the times. And then I saw them kind of go backwards. So it is a love hate relationship in a certain way, but like the majority is love because it changed my life. And because there are so many incredible people in that franchise and there are a lot of good producers. There's a, Think of any industry. There's yeah. freaking weasels and slime balls yeah. in every industry, and there's a lot in that industry. Are you too. committed to watching no matter what? Well, yeah. Are you gonna watch Zach's season? I am. Um, I thought about it, but then I looked at the numbers on my podcast, and you know what? <laughs> my podcast just does better when I'm talking about oh, the Bachelor. Really? So yeah. they want your opinion on yeah. the. Bachelor. See, she's a business oriented <laughs> bee. Should I go back to watching? I didn't watch. So. I only skipped um, Rachel and Gabby season. I yeah. couldn't do the two. I was like, I can't do it. It was uh, nothing against these two women. Yeah. They're incredible. Yeah. I didn't like that season at all because I felt so lost in it the whole time. Yeah. I'm like, wait, what relationship is this? And yeah. who am I? It's enough to keep track of 37 yeah. dudes. I didn't feel connected to the relationships at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what's with them now? Like, are they both broken up? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So okay. So maybe I'll watch if you're watching. And you were saying Becca um, Kufrin is one of your one of your favorite people. She is. Is there a least favorite? Um. Of like out of, of all, anyone. Yeah. At a, all Bachelor Nation. God, probably. Let me think about this. Uh, I've never not gotten along with any yeah. of them. Oh, that's good. Um, I try and think of the, even like the people that were like guys on my season that were so like you know emasculated or like bothered when I broke up with them um but I don't know I get no. along with everybody I would have to like look through a list and be, and like, be like okay oh, maybe that's a, yeah. my least and favorite do, like, the burn book. yeah um okay moving on okay um I love your cue cards well you know okay I have no. to just go off my phone I usually bring my computer but I'm gonna be like mm -hmm. I know that's why I do the little yeah, cues. I like that. um so you're really open about like Botox filler stuff yeah. By the way, in person, it looks less dramatic. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Because that is so true. It's so true. Like, when you film yourself from up close. Even now, I'm looking at this video, and I'm like, I look filled to the brim. No, <laughs> you don't. But then I see myself in a mirror, and no, I'm like, oh. you that's... really don't. And mm -hmm. I feel like you get some heat for it sometimes. Totally. You did a, I saw on your TikTok, like, a really, like, emotional video. Oh, the what you want. Who? Yeah. And it was, like, too scary. You were, like, to, removing yeah. all these layers of shit people say about yeah. you. So as much as you are loved by so many, you do get some, like, heat. People mm -hmm. will be like, too much Botox, too much. Yeah. How do you feel about it? Like, what's your take? Why are people talking about it so much? Do you feel like, like, what's going on with that? I think. I think there's this ridiculous standard for women to look the same as they did when they were first on the show. So people got to know me as 29-year-old Caitlin, and they want me to stay that young-looking, innocent, little, you know, naive girl. Yeah. And everybody changes over seven years. Yeah. And yes, I've gotten Botox, and yes, I've gotten fillers, and I've never gone under the knife, but people seem to think I do. But I love Botox and fillers. Yeah. It, like, it makes me feel rested. It makes me feel like I look refreshed. Um, I also, there's two sides of it. I love it. And I also know it's um, an insecurity. And I need to ask myself sometimes why I am doing that. Yeah. So when people come at me for the Botox and fillers, I'm like, I get it. I do look different. Um, and you're just trying to hurt my feelings. And yeah. sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. So I'm like, I try and think of it as... If those haters went away, I'd be like, oh, what am I doing wrong? I'm not like yeah. doing something. Like I, I don't mind having haters. Really? No, I don't mind. Sometimes it really gets, again, like I'm all over the map because if I'm on my period, uh, it'll make me cry. No, I know. Sometimes you will post like, you know, okay, Donna or yeah, like. Yeah, like sometimes yeah, I find yeah. it comical. Sometimes like. I feel like it does really depend on the mood. Some days you feel like so empowered. Someone could say the worship to you and you're like whatever everyone loves yeah. me and then another day someone will literally be like is your shirt on weird and you're like oh wow yeah <laughs> i was already insecure about my shirt being yeah. weird and now you're pointing yeah. it out so it depends on the day it depends on the day it but, really depends on the day but it's a lot because i feel like people don't talk about looks today right like yeah. i feel comfortable talking about people's like what they're wearing yeah i'm like i don't care you know mm -hmm. like I don't even think celebrities would be offended nowadays. You know, it's like yeah. you're wearing something, could have been a better dress. It's something you're wearing. Yeah. But I feel like people don't really talk about looks. They do and they don't. Yeah. I guess I'm just like, I feel like people really talk yeah. about my looks. Yeah. And I'm always like, why are we just so focused on...
Like, uh, my favorite comeback is when people are commenting on my looks. I'm like, well, it's what's on the inside that matters, Donna. Right. And then they're like, how do you fight back on that? You know? Right, like, right. But I just, I know, like, I, I mean, part of the reason I'm going to a inner child retreat for therapy is that my whole life I did think looks was the most important thing. And I was in a dance studio comparing my body to other girls. And I do know that that's an issue for me. I'd love to figure out why. Like, I would love to not be poking my face every six weeks to try and look better because six weeks isn't it like three months <laughs> I, do. I just did botox for the first time like oh, um well, in, uh, well it's coming back though see oh that's okay i like a little movement yeah no it's a cute little movement i yeah. haven't done fillers uh, yeah i i mean you don't need you have beautiful lips thank you the yeah. lips i wouldn't need no you look but where do you lips. get it in your lips and where else and cheeks i haven't done cheeks in a long time because I actually do feel like they are a little bit overfilled, to be honest, mm. right now. Um, I probably won't touch my cheeks for years. For years? Yeah. I will do Botox every, like, I feel like I do it every six to eight weeks. Yeah. Um, but that's... Do you know that somebody called it skincare? Do somebody you agree with that? I... Listen, I tried it for the first time. Imagine after years of me, like, seeing this thing, not knowing what it yeah. is. Like, I did it for the first time. I'm an anxious person, especially when it comes to like shit like that. And it gave me no anxiety. Yeah. Uh, and then I woke up literally the next day, even though she said it would take like five days. And I'm like, oh, my God. Like, it was magic. Yeah. I was like, this is fucking. I think it's scary. Uh, like, it's it's magic. Yeah. And, and I really, I think I've judged people before. Mm -hmm. I think I've judged when it's like you're 23 years old. I get that. And you freeze your face. Yeah. I went in for an appointment because I really started seeing my 11s, like mm -hmm. etching a deep line yeah and i was like i'm i've i've been even waited too long because yeah. now it's etched forever um so i don't remember who said it maybe it was like but i was like oh i love that it's like part of a skincare yeah routine so i, I kind of like that it's just all so um it just depends like i would never want my niece to turn 22 and think she needs to do that yeah um i started I truly, my forehead looked like a pack of hot dog wieners, like at the age of 26. Like I had Stop. severe. For sure. For real? Yes. And even when I wasn't making an expression, like my girlfriend who does not do Botox, she's Wait, 40. did you have Botox before the show? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. She's, my girlfriend is 40 and she's never done a thing to her face yeah. and she doesn't want to and she thinks aging naturally is beautiful and I respect the hell out of that. When I did my forehead, she said, I get why you did that. Wait, did you watch Emily in Paris? No. Oh, my God. Cause, Should I? Because, like, there is sometimes with actresses that you watch and you're like, wow, her face is frozen. So like, you notice yeah. these things. Yeah. And there are some actors that you're like, your forehead lines are distracting me yes. from the film. You know? <laughs> Especially <laughs> after me. you've gotten it, I've <laughs> yeah. started really, like, looking at everybody yeah. and being like, you got it, you didn't. Oh, man, um, mine were bad. So some actors, somebody wrote like about Emily in Paris, like <laughs> Emily needs to get Botox. And it made me crack up because I was like, oh, my God, I was staring at her forehead <laughs> the entire time. Like I loved some movement, but it was it was it was the wieners that you it were was, saying. Yeah, I had, that. Um, I had the wieners. Another thing that you're really open about is your anxiety. Yeah. So what's up with that now? God, it's gotten so much better. Good. Yeah. Are I you on daily meds? Yeah. What kind? Selexa. Is that like an SSRI? Yeah. Oh, it is. Uh-huh. I love – I call her my best friend, Z. Oh, my God. I call my Zola of, like, Z. Yeah. And it's funny. Did your relationship change with it? Like, when you got on it, were you like, oh, I can't believe I have to be on a drug to, like, be okay? No, it didn't face me at all. Really? Yeah. You were like, love I you? I was like – yeah, because I was like, that's how what volume did to me. <laughs> I'll, I'll, say, I'll pop anything. <laughs> <laughs> I was like – when I started, I was like – I am I guess I'm more dramatic. Um, I was just like, why – you know, I, was, I looked at the bottle and I was like, I can't believe to start the day, you know, I need this. Yeah. And now I'm kind of like, like I, oh, it's, like it's like you, it's like your little baby. It, that it's just, it you. changed my life. Yeah. I honestly could look back at all of my relationships now and it was clockwork. It was every time I was PMSing, I would ruin relationships. I would ruin them. And I would have bad meltdowns, like childlike behavior. Yeah. And I was always like, what is wrong with me? And to be honest, I actually thought I had bipolar disorder for a long time. I was like, there's something that just switches in me. And then I realized it was PMDD, which is premenstrual um, depression disorder. Mm. And then I was like, could going on an SSRI help with that? So I tried it and it completely changed my life. So, so it was more for around the period that you yep, were that's getting That's really that? the only time that I go dark 
And I, and then I have so much freaking empathy for people that actually feel depression every day because I'm like, I cannot imagine feeling that way every yeah. day. And what about um, anxiety? Anxiety comes and goes. Like for it, is, it is a lot around my period as well. Yeah, which is interesting. But um, well, it's those it's hormones, so, man. They fuck you up. Oh my gosh, and hormones it's so are such a powerful thing. It's wild. It. It blows my mind every time because I'm like – and you can't prepare yourself for it. I'm like, I don't know. It could come in like five minutes and I wouldn't know and that's so scary. Because <laughs> isn't – you can get mad if like your boyfriend or husband or partner would be like, are you really bitchy because you're getting – and sometimes it's oh. like on point and totally. you're like, you fucking bitch. Y- yeah. Yeah. How does Jason handle it? He's got – he's pretty good. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think at first – let me tell you something about Jason. He's only other, ever had one other relationship in his life, and it was for five years, and um, they never lived together. So this was, like, really new for him. Plus, he has a brother, and his mom is, like, th- like she's just – An angel. An angel. And if if anything, like, if her emotions were ever up and down, she could control them. And I'm like, what does that feel like? <laughs> Uh, and so he was really like taken aback by some things with me, but yeah. I also own everything where I'm like, well, this is who I am. Um, so he's gotten a lot better because he's able to understand more because I do so much research on hormones and depression and anxiety. And, uh, I've done so much like self work on it that he appreciates yeah. like, that you're working on. It. Yeah. Um, I had something funny. Happen- I went on his podcast, which I really liked going on. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Because I like that he has, like, a thing. Yeah. You know, you're not just going on it. And he has, like, a very clear intention. Yeah. Um, and I also appreciated his, you know, feedback. Because he wasn't, like, he's not, like, oh, you know, how did you get the Kardashians or something? He was, like, more, like, about the money, about the, like. It was, like, the hard work you took yeah, to get exactly. there. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. And I'm, like, that's yeah. so fun for you, probably, yeah. that he thinks of things, like, not in this, like, fan girly way but in this very pragmatic like business oriented way did he get you more businessy like did he make you more business oh my gosh yeah Yeah. i learned so much about i used to be so stupid i used to be really i was really good with like a vision of what i wanted and what i needed to do to get there but i also was very much like what i don't know can't hurt me on the business side of things because it was just too overwhelming where now i'm like on every single business call i want to know numbers i want to know everything like i'm because he kind of like he makes it so approachable yeah and like breaks it down i know and he really breaks down the wall like i was scared to go on his podcast because like i was i went he's had it for how long and i i was his hundredth episode oh you went on yeah and i was terrified i had notes on my hands i had sticky notes i was like what are you gonna ask oh so i i didn't know you went on because when he so he was asking me like how much i made and i didn't want to tell him no and Um, i don't either oh good so i told him i was like how about because i had a feeling i don't know because i told you it feels like i know you Uh uh-huh so i was like how about this? When Caitlin tells you on the podcast, I will. I will. <laughs> so I, I'll see. That's so funny. Yeah, that's I went literally on. what I said on the pod. I was like, but you know what mine comes from? It's more from like, I don't know. I think like in the back of my mind, it might be the trolls that you're like, I don't care if the people that love me would know, right? At the end of yeah. the day, like you're like, they would be like, you go girl, like totally. you're truest supporters, right? But then you have these like voodoo dolling. Do you have you like know, imposter syndrome with it? Because that's how I feel. I'm like, I feel silly that I can, you know, there's the most hardworking, talented person out there who doesn't make as much as I do. And I'm posting on Instagram. Right. Right. It's kind of like, yeah, you don't. And also, I mean, I just think, I mean, good for Jason and good for whoever speaks about it. But I just don't feel comfortable too. My One of my favorite sayings is good for you and it's not for me. I love that. Yeah, because it's like good for you. I'm not going to judge you. Put but on it's TikTok, not for me. you'll go viral tomorrow, baby. I hope so. <laughs> okay, get rid so of me. So to wrap it up, you're going to be like doing a, a groom, a fucking grown woman, <laughs> woman, while you're doing this. Like, put the text. Yeah. Be like, what's good for you is what? Oh, good for good you. Good for but you, it, but it's not for I'm me. T- no, it's going to go viral. Really? Yeah. I feel it. I'm not on TikTok, but I just know that it will. Um, okay. So you have your wine, yes. spades, spades and sparrows. Yeah. Um, you have your scrunchy brand, do. Mm-hmm. You have your podcast. What are the goals? What are like dreams? <sighs> what are, are you just like, I'm happy doing what I'm doing? Is there like anything well, big that you're doing to do next? I 
So I really thought I was going to be hosting. Now my dream is to host Dancing with the Stars. Like me and Alfonso would crush it. Oh, that would be so cool. Uh, but or judge or ju- I mean, I would that imagine would be the best. you're like I am the judge. They'd be like, okay. I, I I don't think I could be a judge because I've never done ballroom dancing until that show, so I don't even know like all the terms. Mm. Uh, but I just want okay. So I used to think. I need to do as much as possible. And I did. And then this year, my 2023, like the word of 2023 last year for me, it was intention, which I don't know. I don't know if I even did that. But this year it's clarity. I just want to feel so clear on what I'm doing and why. Mm. And I want to always grow the podcast. It's my favorite thing to do. I want to get spaded sparrows everywhere that you can possibly imagine. Like just anytime you're in a liquor store, it's like next to the Josh cab. Um, and then do so hard because there, you can only sell so many scrunchies. It was a trend. Yeah. So I'm like trying to decide if I want to keep it or like if that was just a really fun thing that I did yeah. for a couple of years. Like turn do into like something else. Like maybe sell like others. hair care almost mm. like a silk scrunchie and pillowcases like yeah. something to really protect your hair. Yeah. I'm trying to decide that right now. But I also have been really having an itch to get back on TV. Which is so funny. I never thought I would say that. Really? Like in what way though? Like I would love to have my own show that's like really like for women. Well, it's actually for everybody. Why did you never think you would say that? You love to entertain. I think I was just so jaded by um, produce the production of mm -hmm. Bachelor. And then. Isn't it so hard to say your dreams out loud though? No. Oh, okay. (laughs) I always feel like. Ridiculous I get saying that, the though. big thing that you really want. No, you should. Like, I know. I feel like I've just maybe been able to say it, but I I feel like the imposter syndrome that you were talking about. I so I don't that. think I have the imposter syndrome. I hate labels. Um, <laughs> I get it. But it's like those things, I'm like to say it when it's something also, it's not like I'm trying to be like an accountant, you know? Yeah. I'm trying to be this like annoying thing that so many people want to, you know, it's like that thing where I'm like, you look from the outside in yeah. and you're like, you can go, kind of cringe, but you're like, no, but you're like, it's not like you're saying that and you're fucking like, you know, not doing anything of the sort. I think you should say the most ridiculous I dreams know. you could you ever should. have. Because here's the advice that I say that I should put on TikTok and go viral. I always <laughs> say a method, like what I, maybe I said this on Jason's podcast was like, you got to be a little bit delusional to like yes. have success. I agree. In any industry, but especially in this, like, think that you can yeah. be on TV, yeah. have your own show. It's like, who do you, it's like the inner voice, like, who do you think you are? And then you have to answer that and be like, no, 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 I can fucking do it. I agree. I have the most delusional vision board when I was 25 <laughs> of what I wanted to do in life. And it was literally like, have my own radio show, be an entrepreneur, get on TV have a golden retriever i wanted a 69 custom built bronco which i get it in february hey. like it's you gotta be delusional wow. i love that i love that caitlin bristow be uh-huh. delusional okay i'm so happy you were on the show <laughs> thank you for having me it was me. like a dream come true it was on my 2015 See? B- did you say board. it out loud i've said it yeah in emails that weren't responded to no i'm just kidding <laughs> Maybe. I need to I look back. back and I look. need to do a Chris Harrison name dropping <laughs> episode. <laughs> These are the people that, okay. Yeah. Kaylin, thank you. Thank this was you. so fun. Thanks for having me. Of course.